back to another video and today we're back on Pro Cycling Manager 2019 for the 18th episode of the Team Sunweb career mode in which we're going to uh, start the second half of the Giro d'Italia Giro that we started uh, on episode 16 um, that just got uploaded at the day I'm recording this. Um, but we're finally going to start mountains in this Giro and it's been a while since we've had some action. Um, I think we're still leading, yeah we're leading, we'll, sorry, we're leading the GC with Tom Dumoulin um, as we uh, head for the stage between Cuneo and Pinerolo for 142 kilometers, a stage uh, considered as hilly because there's one climb, the um, Colle del Montozzo, uh, but mainly, apparently there's some cobbles, so I would suppose that this wall, the wall of San Maurizio, just before the finish line, uh, so we might try and do things like in this climb. Uh, as you can see, the shape, well the fitness, should I say, of my riders is uh, abysmal, except Tom Dumoulin, so that's good. Marques is well, doing well uh, after having done a very solid campaign classic. Uh, but yeah, enough talking. Uh, let's go to Cuneo for 140 kilometers of racing. Off we go in Cuneo, um, 440 kilometers of uh, well intense riding, but my riders are all in a bad day except Tom Dumoulin. So. Don't expect anything from like, well, I wanted to have some moment in the break, but because he's a minus two, I don't think I should expect anything from him. Uh, but I also wanted to send Marc Hirschi. So yeah, I, I don't really know. We're going to send Marc Hirschi either way. Because he's well, like, yeah, he's 56 of the GC. And we're also going to try to send Sam Oman. Uh, whether he's going to be able to like get in the break, I don't know. But... Uh, well, you never know. Like Mark Hirsch is going to stay in the break because he's the uh, well, he's tied for the um, best classification or the best climber classification. Sorry, um, and yeah, we, we we're just going to see what happens. Uh, everyone here can slow down except for Sam Oman, who's going to counter attack here. Peloton doesn't seem to follow me. Uh, there's an attack on the left. That's Reto Hollenstein, followed by uh, Nicolo Bagioli. Uh, Okay, Phil Bauhaus is accelerating. Okay, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can, like, have a gap. Uh, if not, we'll stay in the break with Mark Hershey and just Mark Hershey. Okay, uh, we're just under the uh, midway part of the race now. Uh, just over 60 kilometers remaining in this stage. And uh, I have to say, this has been a tough battle between the breakaway and the peloton. Um, I think 2 minutes 13 or, like, I think 2.30 probably is the biggest gap the breakaway has ever had. Uh, over the peloton, it came like to 40 seconds a few kilometers ago, like at the bottom of the descent. But every team is pacing m the breakaway down. Um, now I think it's probably because of Sam Oman's presence in the break, but I mean I don't I don't really care, do I? I'm I'm just doing my race, and the good thing about having someone in the break is it means that I don't have to take charge of the pursuit. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that to like the other teams. But surprisingly enough. It's the sprinters who are pacing. Like the Gaviria has been pacing Nizzolo, Ackerman, Christoph, Bennett, uh, and I, I don't know why. Because Bora doesn't have a leader. They've got Peter Sagan, but I don't think Peter Sagan is going to get like on this climb with this rhythm. Uh, Dimension Data, I could be completely wrong, but I don't think they've got anyone. Uh, they've got Kro oh, actually they've got Kreuzger. He's fifth of the GC. I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, UAE, they've got Fabio Aru, but he's already 10 minutes down. Dan Martin, 7.30 down. So, yeah, I'd, I don't really know what, like, the plan there. Oh, that, that was the uh, cobble section. That right there is the cobble sector of the race. Okay, well, it went pretty smoothly. Uh, Dumoulin is easily, easily going to uh, go through. Okay, uh, Samerman has been dropped because I'm not pacing with him. I was only pacing with Mark Hershey. But he's going to uh, eventually come back, hopefully. Okay, we've started the Montozzo. Uh, the gap is 114. So I'm not expecting huge things here in the break. Uh, I don't. If we can go to the summit, then that's already a win. Meanwhile, um, the peloton has regrouped in a, a solid bunch. It got spread out after the uh, cobble climb. Um, like, uh, some group of like 20 riders or 50 riders 
I need Tom Dumoulin was in the main group, uh, which was quite embarrassing, knowing that my team is mainly um, composed of climbers. But I mean, you, you, you never know. Okay, breakaway has been caught up. Uh, could I counter attack with Mark Yashi? Just out, out of curiosity. Oh, we're, we're still in the potential breakaway. Okay, are we still in the break? I, I don't know. I need to know because I, I can't make a move if I'm not aware of where I am. Um, Chad Hagerman, you can stop doing whatever you are doing. Dumon is going to come back at the front of this group and uh, Markish is going to send one. Let's see if they follow me. Let, let's see who follows me. Nils Polit tries to follow me. Fabio Aru is facing. Okay, that's not something I wished to, hap uh, to happen, but it it's happening. Marc Hershey is dropping Nils Polit, which is quite decent. 3k to go until the summit of the Montoso. And Fabio Aru is going to bring back everyone because he's a bitch. Right, we've had to, like, pace uh, to, get the, to get the points because that's also why I'm here. Uh, so Tom Dumoulin is going to take first place at the summit of the Montozzo, uh, adding 32 points to uh, its tally. And he's uh, going to be, sorry, on a 46? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. 46 points. Jack Egg takes second with 30 points. Mark Ishii doesn't get any points. 11 people only in this group. Dan Martin, Egan Bernal, Adam Yates, Roman Kroziga, Vincenzo Nibali, Richard Carapaz, Mikel Landa, Yannis Aguirre, Bauke Mollema. Uh, I think that's it. Why aren't Movistar pacing? You've got two guys. Why isn't um, Mitchelton pacing? You've got two guys, including your leader. Who's behind? Is that Enric Mas? It is. Enric Mas is dropped. The white jersey, same for Andre Amador, uh, Dylan Van Baal, and Sergei, no, Sergio sorry, Iguita. Okay, there's been a massive uh, group at the... Uh, oh wait, shit, it's the Cobble Climber. Cobble Climb, Cobble Climb, come on. Dumoulin, mate, you need to be at the front, otherwise you're going to get blocked and all that. Alright, nice. Dumoulin has done well here. Solid performance from Dumoulin. Uh, I knew if I stayed in the Wheel of Samoman, I would have been blocked. So we've pulled... Well, yeah, we've, we've done that. We've, we've done a solid job here. We're now going to sprint until the line... Is Peter Sagan going to overtake us? Most likely. Uh, no, he's not. He's not. The win for Tom Dumoulin ahead of Peter Sagan, Egan Bernal, Andrea Amador, Van Baal, Nibali, Caruso, Chad Hager, Fabio Aru, and Adam Yates. Uh, is there a gap here with, Ad with Enric Mas? Probably not. I think Enric Mas is going to bunch the two groups together. Um, but we grabbed the win with Tom Dumoulin on this 12th stage. Very good job from, uh, from Sunweb. Tom Dumoulin grabs a fourth win on uh, the first stage of this episode of the Giro with uh, a decent performance uh, ahead of Pete Sagan and Egan Bernal on the stage that I would probably suit Pete Sagan a bit more. Uh, now, sadly, the climb was like way too far from the line because there was n 11 riders starting the descent in the first group. We ended up with like a group of 40. Uh, there hasn't been a gap between Tish Benut, sorry, between Henrik Mass and the others. So yeah, 39 riders in the main group. Uh, three guys of our team, including Sam Oman and Chad Hager. Good performance from the American. GC-wise, uh, we are now 104 ahead of Egan Bernal after having gained 6 seconds today, if I'm correct. Uh, are my math correct? I, I can't tell. I think I got 6 seconds. It would be what like bonus seconds would be. Um, I don't think anything changed in the GC, um, or at least not in the top 10. From what I can see. Points wise, Tom Dumoulin uh, has now a 33 point gap over Egan Bernal, uh, a 16 point gap ahead, uh, ahead sorry, of Jack Haig. Egan Bernal has won the white jersey, and the best team is still the team in Eost as we are approaching the first mountain stage between Pinerolo and uh, the Lago Seru in Cere, um, Ceresole Reale. First mountain stage of this Giro, and uh, well, the trend just keeps on going. Tom Dumoulin is the only one with a good day today. Uh, I mean, I'd rather be him. Well, I'd rather having him in a good day rather than, like, Roy Curvers. But I wouldn't mind having, like, a good day of Jay Hindley or Sam Oman or Louis Verveik. But no, I guess I'm going to have to figure this on my own. Um, now, this climb, the, the, the final climb of the Tire Sole Reale, is one of the climbs that I probably hate the most on PCM because I never know how to, like, manage it properly. So, it, it's going to be a step in the dark for this one. We're going to send Samoman in the break. 
Um, okay, maybe we're not if if Andrea Amador doesn't want us to go. But uh, yeah, we've got like a mountain jersey to defend, and uh, it's not going to defend itself. So some moment in the break. Oh come on! Why doesn't the peloton want me to go in the break? Why? I'm eleven minutes down. Oh, there's Simon Yates. Oh. Oh. Okay, I get it. I do get why. Alright, we're going to try now to attack with Mark Yashi and uh, we'll see what the peloton does. Okay, it appears that the peloton has let um, Simon Yates in the break. Something that I'm not really happy with, uh, or happy about. We're going to attack with Tom Dumoulin now. Because I'm not letting Simon Yates in the breakaway, even if it's six minutes down. That's still Simon Yates. Okay, it's all well and good. Uh, Tom Dumoulin ha managed to come back on Simon Yates. The peloton came back on Tom Dumoulin. We now have a five-man group with Niels Polit, Maximilian Schachmann, Tige Beno, um, Alexandre Genièze, Antoine Toluc, and Andrea Van Drame trying to catch him. Next up, we'll try to attack with Sam Oman, uh, which is what we're going to do right now. And the peloton appears to let me go. Which is the best thing that have happened in this race so far. So Sam Oman in pursuit of the uh, group of, uh, of the breakaway, should I say. We're approaching the summit of the uh, Colle de Lys. Uh, the peloton doesn't want to let us go anymore. Because there's, there's one guy in this group. Uh, he's right there. It's Davide Formolo. And he's only 5 minutes down. So like, he's even more of a threat than like Simon Yates was. Which is saying a lot. N nonetheless, Sam Oman is going to take... Oh, please tell me I got first. Don't tell me Tish Benu jumped on the line. Okay, Sam Oman is, um, well, has got 32 points for this climb. Which is good, because we're preparing, uh, like, a polka dot, well, no, not a polka dot, the uh, Cyclamen jersey for Dumoulin as well. Uh, for some reason, my team decided to drop by itself from the peloton. Uh, the only guy still there is Tom Dumoulin and Jay Hindley, because Jay was protecting Tom. Uh, even if Jay Hindley is currently being dropped from the peloton because Julien Bernard is a son of a bitch. But yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Um, th the gap was like 320, but just after the intermediate sprint, it's now 50 seconds. It, I, I, I don't know. If there's a link, please, like, someone tell me what's happening because I think the AI in PCM is suffering of a severe, um, like, case of a uh, dumbness or like lack of intelligence L intelligence sorry should i say um well yeah 50 seconds 35 people in this group jay hindley has completely exploded from um the peloton so tom jimelon has 66 kilometers to go and he is on his own okay we are at the summit of uh, the uh, plan del uh, sorry the pian del lupo uh and uh i mean we're just gonna Slowly take the lead. Uh, oh, why is no one following? Is everyone dead here? Is like everyone dead? Wow. I mean, they're gonna come back eventually because that's what PCM does. Everyone always comes back in the descent when you're not pacing because I'm the pink jersey. But okay, I'm surprised. Why isn't like Higuita or Tish Benut pacing? They've got all the interest. They can win the stage. But no, apparently that's not good enough for them because they're not pacing at all. Uh, meanwhile, the group Astana, is, well, the Astana group is going to come back uh, with Nero Quintana, Primoz Roglic, Carapaz. Honestly, if like Higuita finishes out of the top 20, that's jokes because he was in the break and he just decided not to pace. Okay, we've started the uh, first few uh, kilometers of the Lago Seru. For now, we're not gonna do any effort because that's why I always do like I always pace too early in this climb um, but yeah 50 riders now everyone is slowly coming back except like Louis Vavek uh, and Mark Hirschi and Leonard Kemner because they're all gonna drop uh, after having done like their job but uh, yeah it's not looking great right now because I only have one teammate and well that's just not enough is it the aim is to manage to reach the second part of the climb um, after like the flat bit 
and then from that point onwards, pace with Samerman, and then try to do something with Tom Dumoulin, uh, and try to like make a good use of his um, of his plus two. Eight kilometers to go, and here are the first attacks. Dan Martin, followed by Simon Yates, Bauke Mollema, but mainly Egan Bernal. Um, I probably should have followed, but I was waiting to get water, so like I didn't take care of the attack. Damien Caruso is going to pace for Bahrain Merida, trying to bring back Nibali as well, uh, who's literally in my wheel, instead of in the wheel of his teammate. Bernal is looking quite strong though, I I'll have to say. Bernal is looking quite strong. Uh, he's managed to merge with the three guys up ahead. I'm hoping for one of them to like slow down so that uh, I can come back. For example, Sam Oman, you are honestly so bad. You're getting dropped by Andre Amador, fam. Andre Amador. Right, well, it's time for Tom Dumoulin to show what he's got. It's time for him to show to the world why he deserves to get the pink jersey in Verona in less than nine days now. Or in nine days, technically. Tom Dumoulin on the right-hand side of the road, coming back slowly, but surely at the front of the peloton. Peloton still paced by the Movistar team of Mikel Landa and Richard Carapaz. There's the attack by Mikel Landa. Tom Dumoulin in the wheel. Of the Spaniard, and it's a yeah, it's a decent attack from uh, from Mikel Landa. Carapaz as well is here. Um, Mikel Landa's leader. We're going to come back on the Ian Banal uh, in a few meters now. 17 seconds is the lead for um, the uh, runner-up of uh, the GC right now. Dan Martin has exploded from the group up ahead. Richard Carapaz and Vincenzo Nibali are the only one able to follow Dumoulin. Roman Crozigar and Mikel Landa have exploded as well. Adam Yates is at the end of the road. Tom Dumoulin has overtaken Egan Bernal. He's managed to come on the first group with Bauke Mollema as well. 700 meters to go. Bauke Mollema, sorry, no. Tom Dumoulin against Vincenzo Nibali at the summit of the Lago Tseru. I won't have a lot of energy to sprint. I won't be able to sprint, but that doesn't matter because Vincenzo Nibali is out of energy. Back-to-back -back wins for Tom Dumoulin for the first mountain stage of the Giro. He, had, he wins ahead of Egan Bernal. No, sorry, Vincent Tullibaly, Egan Bernal, Bauke Mollema, Richard Carapaz, Adam Yates, Dan Martin, Roman Kroziga and Mikel Landa. Patrick Conrad uh, will probably round up the top 10 if my math are correct. Or Primoz Roglic, if, if Primoz Roglic attacks him. Um, but, I mean, strong climb. Solid climb from Dumoulin. Uh, we had to come back on Egan Bernal. Which was like the hardest thing I have to I had to do in this stage, but apart from that, um, it's what Dumoulin's fifth win in thirteen stages. I'd say that's quite decent. And um, sadly, we're going to lose Roy Curvus after this thirteen stage. Maybe it's uh, it it might be like a bad for a good for uh, for Roy Curvus. He he probably doesn't have the legs to do a Grand Tour anymore. Uh, maybe he'll like do some other races during the Giro, uh, like some small races there, uh, here and there, to uh, well, catch a break. And uh, yeah, but there's a lot of riders out of the delay today, I think six or seven. It wasn't easy. It was far from easy for Tom Dumoulin, but uh, he eventually came through in the second part of the Lago Seru and um, overtook Egan Bernal, uh, even if the Colombian had taken well things into the matter and wanted to overtake Dumoulin. Uh, he just wasn't strong enough to hold on for um, one more kilometer, and Dumoulin overtook him. Same for uh, Vincenzo Nibali, which means that in the GC right now, Tom Dumoulin is, f is 1 minute 52 ahead of Ingen Bernal, 3 or 9 ahead of Vincenzo, uh, Vincenzo Nibali, sorry. Um, then Carapaz, Molema, Kreuziger, very good. I'm happy for Kreuziger, he's, he's doing a very good job with dimension data right now. Adam Yates, Primoz Roglic, Jack Haig, and Henrik Maas round up the top 10. Henrik Maas already 10 minutes down after only one mountain stage, which just, mean, which, sorry, just means how dominant Tom Dumoulin has been on the, uh, over the course of the first two weeks. Sprint-wise, Dumoulin still has the jersey. And for the mountain classification, it's now 92 points for Dumoulin ahead of Vincenzo Nibali's 38. Now, I know points in the Giro are easy to gain. But that's already quite a nice reach and quite a nice gap for uh, for Tom Dumoulin. It's another stage in the Alps between Courmayeur and uh, um, no, sorry, between Saint Vincent and Courmayeur as we are approaching the Mont Blanc. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're in f probably going to be in France for this part of the stage. I could I could be wrong. I think we're in France for the start at least. 
Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of points to be taken today. There's already a Yates in the break. Sadly, Samerman is 17 kilometers down the road already because my man starts at the back of the peloton because he's lazy. Um, but yeah, I'm not happy about Samerman into the break. Tij Benut as well, not happy about that. Really not. Kreuziger, you're sixth of the GC. Why are you attacking? You're never going to go. You're sixth of the GC. So just stop. Like, keep your energy for the fa for like the finale. Because everyone knows that there's going to be 10 people at the summit of the first category climb. And then no one's going to pace. So then probably the entire peloton is going to catch at the bottom of Courmayeur. And then you can use your energy there. Uh, but now I'm just going to wait for Samuel to be at the front uh, in uh, approximately 135 kilometers right now. Uh, and we'll try to attack. Uh, okay, update after the second category climb. It's a madness. Yates has been co-op, but Kreuziger is still up ahead. There's only 28 riders left in the peloton. No guys. <laughs> I don't have a single teammate. Right, people are going to come back. Which means they're going to let Roman Kreuziger in the break. That's a bold move. That's a very bold move. Um, I mean, I'm hoping for my teammates to come back right now. That, that's the main aim. I'd like to have at least someone. Um, but it's surprising to see Kreuziger in the break. Okay, here's your new breakaway. Uh, oh, okay, Demarque. As we approach the summit of uh, Veronie, Demarque, Kreuziger, who's attacking again, Sam Omen, and Andri Zeitz. Zeitz just exploded, that was the case previously for Godu and Batalin. Uh, okay, Kreuziger is strong, you know? Kreuziger is strong, but Sam Omen is quite strong as well. And he doesn't, hasn't done as many after as Kreuziger has done in the first half. And Sam Omen is now on his own, going for the summit of Veronier to get 32 points added uh, to, uh, well, the amount he already has, he's going to double his point, um, in about a, well, in 400 meters now. Good. So, Kreuziger, Demarque, Zeitz, Godu, and then we'll have a peloton of 92 riders with an attack from Tij Benot, uh, who's going to try and take the remaining points at the summit. There's been a crash, there's been a massive crash in the peloton. Massive, massive crash, Dug group A3, Egan Banal has fallen um, he's eventually going to come back, but there's a lot of riders as well who fell. Uh, the likes of Nero Quintana. I think I saw another movie star guy, but I could be wrong. Uh, I don't know if there's any retirement. I don't think there are. But yeah, Egan Bernal and Quintana down in the descent uh, towards the uh, Truc d'Arbe. Or Truc d'Arbe, there's an attack in the peloton that's Antoine Toluc. No one really cares about him. Um, but yeah, it's never good to crash. There's, like... It just isn't a good a good sign um, when a rider crashes. There's a lot of riders dropped as well here. Uh, a group of 32 riders. Okay. Meanwhile, up ahead, Samerman is still in the lead. He's going to get caught by Kreuziger in about a few meters. Um, and we'll probably drop him once again as we approach the summit of the Truc d'Arbe. Okay, we're approaching the summit. Uh, only Godu and Kreuziger are able to follow. Alessandro de Marquia has completely exploded in my wheel. Um, just under 900 meters to go. And um, we're, we're looking strong with Samerman. I think, like, he's by far the strongest in the break. David Godu dropped once. Kreuziger dropped once as well. And he's done many, many efforts in the first half uh, of this race. We're also pacing a bit with Dumoulin because uh, there was, like, Tish Benoud there. And I didn't want him to get any points. But, uh, yeah. 96 points for, for Dumoulin. 78 for Samerman. We're, we're looking... Quite decent right now, uh, with one climb left uh, in this stage, and obviously the climb in Courmayeur, which probably is like a fourth category climb or a third. And I think Roman Kreuziger might have destroyed all hopes of a GC good of a good performance in the GC, because he literally just exploded uh, following the rhythm of David Godu and Sam Oman. Maybe he's going to like catch some catch a break because the peloton has completely stopped pacing. Uh, following the return of Kreuziger in the peloton. Which means that Sam Oman and Godu are going right now for the win. And Sam Oman has dropped David Godu just by uh, relaying him. Sam Oman might go for a win today. You never know. The gap is 149, but it's severely increasing. 
Attacks in the peloton, Sergio Higuita, pro probably Alexandre Nez, Tij Benut, yep, your usual bunch. Um, we're going to get to get a lot of time on Sam Oman uh, in this uh, acceleration. But Sam is going to cross the line at Dicole San Carlo in first position ahead of David Godu, who's slowly coming back. Like He didn't explode uh, like I thought he would. But uh, we now have 24 kilometers in um, this stage, just under... 16, I think, to reach the summit of Courmayeur as Tom Dumoulin cross the, crosses the line in third for um, the Colle San Carlo. Sam Oman is virtually leading the classification, only four little points ahead of the uh, Maglia Rossa. There's been a crash in the peloton, that's uh, Mark Hirschi who fell with Jonathan Castroviero, but everything appears to be fine for, uh, for them too. There's been an attack in the peloton though, and that's Mikel Landa and uh, Jon Izaguirre, something we can't really let slide. Uh, so I think we're going to sacrifice Sam Oman's win uh, to ensure that Tom Dumoulin doesn't lose too much today as we approach the uh, final climb of Courmayeur in about 6 kilometers. Sam Oman dropped himself back in the peloton. Um, David Godu had attacked him and I mean there was no point in chasing, like in staying up, there was only 20 seconds. Um, that was a very like poor lead for us. Um, Yates and Enric Mas have made a move though, uh, trying to uh, well get a win instead of a good GC position because they are already uh, quite far from Tom Dumoulin. A good move again by Enric Mas on the left hand side of the road and uh, Egan Bernal is on the right. Tom Dumoulin isn't exactly as well placed as I hoped he would. I don't think that was English but you got what I said. Sprint, Giulio Ciccone looks good. Giulio Ciccone, Mikel Landa, Mikel Landa, Mikel Landa wins in Courmayeur ahead of Tom Dumoulin who came back very strongly. Um, Vincent Sebel gets third, Yoni Zagiri, Dan Martin, Egan Bernal, Richard Carapaz, Giulio Ciccone, Boku Moleman, Patrick Conrad. It's going to be a uh, 17th place for some moment. There's been a crash from Louis Verveig. Uh, that really is a shame. I'm very sad and affected by it. Croziga, despite his spending the entire day in the break, finishes with the peloton, I reckon. Uh, so, I, th I think he's done the job here. It sadly won't be a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back for Tom Dumoulin, who uh, failed to win today. Only second position for uh, the leader of the Team Sunweb, behind Mikel Landa and just ahead of Vincenzo Nibali. Um, a stage for the breakaway today. 29 seconds is the loss for Croziga and Sam Oman. GC-wise, Croziga keeps his 7th position, Sam Oman keeps his 25th, or probably overtakes some people, it would make sense. Uh, Points-wise, Dumoulin still takes the lead and increases his lead in the point classification. For the mountain one, it's a tie between Tom Dumoulin and Sam Oman, both on 110 points, Godu is the next uh, on the line with 48. Um, but it's definitely, a trend, definitely interesting, definitely interesting now for the mountain classification. Uh, but yeah, to the 14th stage. GC looks like this, uh, Dumoulin, Bernal, Vincenzo Nibali, Carapaz, Maulema, Yates, Croziga, Roglic, Mas, and Dan Martin, 958 uh, uh, behind Dumoulin in 10th position uh, for the Irish rider. Alright, 15th stage of the Giro between Ivrea and Como. Um, it's a special stage for me, because if you watch, like, I swear I referred to, like, my Jiro playthrough, literally every stage now. Uh, but if you've watched my Jiro playthrough, this stage is the stage that kicked everything off. Uh, and by that, I mean that in this stage, my two opponents in the G so I had uh, Vincenzo Nibali. In the descent of the Colma di Sormano, Tom Dumoulin and Primoz Roglic both withdrew from the race. I had, like, that's what that's why I won the tour really easily, because I had no position at the end. Um, so hopefully it won't happen today, because I don't want to lose any, like, a position. It would just be boring for the rest of the tour. Uh, so yeah, 240 kilometers. We're going to send Mark Hirsch in the break today. You know what? He's He, he appears to be on a decent day. He's got the legs to uh, to climb, like, the uh, Madonna del Gizzalo and the Colma di Sormano. So we're going to send um, our, uh, the fourth place of La, La Flèche Wallonne, I think, or third, in the break and see what he can do. Alright, we're now at the very bottom of uh, the first climb of today's stage, the Madonna del Gizzalo. And uh, 
exactly like last time, a lot of riders have seen to enjoy the uh, the asphalt because uh, well, there's been probably like a solid 20 or 25 falls, um, or sorry, crashes. Only one withdrawal though, I think um, it's Sav um, Fabio Sabatini. We're just going to take another look. Uh, but yeah, only Fabio Sabatini has withdrawn from the race. So for now, everything leader related is decent. Uh, no one has withdrew, uh, withdrawn, sorry, which is the main thing. Um, David Godu and Tish Gonut are in the break, so we're going to try our best with Mark Hershey to uh, well, prevent them from getting the, the maximum amount of points. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Tish Gonut has made his move. Um, Godu, Hershey, well, everyone is trying to follow now. Mar uh, David Godu was the first one to make. Uh, a move to try and come back on uh, the uh, young Belgian, and here's the counter attack. The counter attack, sorry, from Mark Hershey. It's probably going to be second uh, at the uh, Madonna de Vigitsalo, just behind Tish Benut, uh Unless we take the inside line, no, I don't think we would. I don't think we will. Uh, meanwhile, in the peloton, uh, we've lost everyone except Dumoulin. So you just like that's the kind of thing that you love to see in PCM. Uh, at least we still have Tom, which is the main reason uh, of why we, uh, we're fighting right now. Attack in the peloton. Attack in the peloton. Uh, I've done something I'd never do, but we've attacked uh, with l more than 40 kilometers left in this stage. Um, I just wanted to like try to see how he is, um, see what the peloton response would be. And uh, it's not great, from what I can tell you, it really isn't the best. Um, Mikel Landa is currently in chase, but um, the issue is that there's this long flat section here, um, which will prove to be, well, to the advantage uh, of the peloton. But apart from that, Tom Dumoulin is looking quite decent today. Right, we've started the final climb, the Civic Leo. Only uh, one guy has managed to uh, leave the peloton in the flat uh, portion, and it would appear to be um, the CCC rider Alessandro De Marque. But he's gonna get caught up by uh, Tom Dumoulin's rhythm here. We're gonna try and like increase the rhythm a lot. Uh, we're also gonna try and pace with Leonard Kemner. Uh, don't ask me why, just to like reduce uh, the gap or well, the, the loss from Sam Owen. But yes, yeah, uh, Tom Dumoulin pacing in um, in Civic Leo. We'll attack, uh, we're gonna attack in uh, the um, toughest part of the climb when we'll reach like 10%. Uh, I just want to see like who can follow and who can't. West Kreuziger, last position, ooh, seventh place of the GC is looking wobbly. All right, here's the attack from Tom Dumoulin. No one is immediately jumping in the wheel of uh, the Maglia Rosa near an Aero Quintana, severely like increasing his rhythm. But uh, he's not exactly following. The same has can be said for Egan Bernal, who's now taking things in command to try and come back and still uh, have well some chances of winning this Giro d'Italia. Tom Dumoulin is the first one in the descent as uh, he approaches now the uh, town of Como for uh, this mini Lombardia, technically, as you could call it. Crash! Huge crash in the group A1. Yates, Mollema, Kreuziger, Landa and Conrad. I knew something would happen there. I knew it. It always does. It always happens. And no one withdrew, thankfully. No one appears to be injured. But there's a lot of time that's going to be lost for some of the riders caught in that incident. Nibeli and Bernal trying to come back on Tom Dumoulin. They might well do so. Uh, who's that? That's that Dan Martin. Dan Martin with an incredible descent. He came back on Vincenzo Nibeli in a descent. Wow. Okay. Well, Tom Dumoulin wins in common nonetheless ahead of Dan Martin, Bernal, Nibeli, Carapaz, Nero Quintana, Damino Caruso, Enric Mas, Primoz Roglic, and Andri Deitz. There were no gaps between Tom Dumoulin and the rest of the guys, uh, like even the Primoz Roglic, even though Primoz Roglic took two minutes. But it's all, it's all good, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll give it to, to PCM, uh, we've made the effort for nothing. However, some riders have lost big, Roman Kroziger losing three minutes following his fall, uh, his crash, sorry. The Yates brother losing two minutes, 
Mollum, uh, Landa, all of them. That's that's a big loss for for some of these guys. Dan Martin doing a bit today, uh, managing to stay up uh, with Dumoulin. I mean, to be honest, no, I was about to say like only Dumoulin Bernal. Sorry, only Martin Bernal and Nibali did that. Did that, but everyone is in the same group. Uh, Roman Kroziger drops to 10th position. I don't know why I'm fo focusing that much on Roman Kroziger during this, like, Jero, but uh, I mean, it's just weird to see him there. Um, but the gaps are increasing now. 204 over Ian Bernal, 509 over Richard Carapaz. I think the podium is settled. Whether it will be in this order, you don't know, and I don't know. But uh, yeah, Mountain Wise, we're now 131 points, 21 points clear of Samoan. We're strengthening as well uh, our lead in the point classification. And uh, we've got one more stage to do in this episode. Lovere Ponte di Legno. Let's go. Lovere Ponte di Legno. Final stage of this episode of uh, the Team Sunday Career Mode. Tom Dumoulin, as always, is the only guy uh, in a decent fitness. Uh, we're going to send Samoman immediately in the break. There's one attack already. That's Emmanuel Gebrek Zaber. He's being followed by Samoman, Yoni Zagiri, Alexandre Genies, Tish Benout, Davide Formolo. Not Louis Vavek. Okay, maybe Louis Vavek. Do you know what? For why not? Why not? Um, I won't lie. That's not a stage that I like. Uh, it is far from being my favorite because usually, like this, like the final part after the descent, uh, is useless. So the you can't really have any gaps. It's gonna be like ten seconds be because of a good sprint or something else. Um, but it's never usually like. A stage that does gaps. Kroziga trying to attack once again. This guy has like some fire in uh, in this Giro. Someone doing the break. Uh, the aim is to retain the uh, mountain jersey to like keep the points in the team. Uh, and if someone can get the jersey, then it's all good. But I'm I won't lie. My priority is Tom Dumoulin right now. Crash in the peloton. Leonard Kemna. And uh, most likely Manuel Buchmann and Boku Molema as well. Uh, anyone withdrawing from the race? Uh, yep, Emmanuel Buchmann. Emmanuel Buchmann have, I mean, he's having a shocker of a Giro, and that's not gonna help his case. Buchmann out of the 2019 Giro d'Italia. Uh, yeah, just disappointing performance from him. Ackerman and Sagan apparently have been caught up in the incident as well, so probably one of the worst case scenarios for Bora and Zoro. Okay, the breakaway officially starts the Paso Gavia. It's been a hard journey to uh, to get the breakaway, but we finally got there. Four minutes is uh, the lead over the peloton. Davide Formolo, Tige Benout, uh, Emmanuel Gebrek Zaber, Manuel Seni, Alexandre Jonez, Yoni Zagiri, De Alexandre De Marquis, Roman Kroziga, Sergio Higuita, and Samoan is the group um, up ahead. 14 kilometers to go for uh, this climb with an average gradient of 7.9% as we reach. 2,618 meters, um, which is quite high, if I'm being honest, uh, and with like the levels of oxygen being low at the uh, at the summit, maybe we'll see some riders collapsing. Uh, probably not Ian Bernal, because I mean he's Colombian, uh, but you never know. Some riders could uh, suffer from uh, the mountain disease or anything. So yeah, um, currently we're studying. We're steady pacing 77 to 83. Um, Gebrek Zabia doing most of the job for uh, his leader Roman Kroziga. Good move from the AI for once though. To have like a leader and a teammate in the breakaway so that the leader doesn't have to do anything. The, uh, it, is the PCM AI becoming smart? No. That can't be. It, it can't be. As we're approaching the summit of the Paso, de, uh, of the Paso Gavia, sorry, Kroziga is going to take the lead uh, and he's going to get. 40 points now, I think. Yeah, 40 points for Kroziger. That's big. Uh, Isagere, Genez, Demarquis, Benout, Higuita, Formolo. Some of them completely exploded. Um, just under 5 km to go uh, of the summit. So, not not looking good. Kroziger gets 40 points. Um, yeah, not happy about that. I'm really not happy about that. Uh, I don't know what like it's going to imply for the mountain classification. Uh, just the fact that probably... He's going to get 40 points on all of us. Do I even get a point with Sam Uh I don't know. Do I get points? I have no clue whatsoever. We're going to wait with Sam We'll wait for Tom Dumoulin. 
um, his cost is going now. Tom Dumoulin got one point. Love that. So I'm 46 points clear of, some, of um, Kroziger. And there's uh, 32 points remaining in the stage. Right, we've started the final climb. Uh, well, the final real climb of the day, the Pass del Mortirolo. Another iconic climb uh, in the Giro. 12 kilometers, average gradient of 11%. And Simon Yates is not messing around. He's just doing an incredible rhythm at the um, at the head of the peloton right now, pacing probably for his brother, uh, even though they're quite close, G2 wise, I think. I mean, that's yeah, okay, they're not, but it could be close. 244 is the lead for the breakaway, still paced by Roman Krozega, um, looking for either a good spot on the GC or the mountain jersey, which I mean, both are in his reach. So we're going to try and catch him because uh, I'm not losing any jersey in this Giro. Alright, we've managed to catch Tish Benut and all them lot. Uh, we've been pacing with uh, Tom Dumoulin, there's only one guy ahead and that would appear to be Yannis Aguirre, the 12th position of the GC. Um, some of them died uh, like some kilometers ago, so uh, we're just pacing that right now with, uh, with Tom. And uh, things uh, should be good for now, for us. Uh, Beno, Mar uh, Demarc and Higuit have exploded. Jeunesse, Dan Martin and Kroziger are the next on the list. Dan Martin struggling though, that's quite surprising because it's still early on in the stage. There's still 30 kilometers remaining in that stage. Uh, that is really not a good idea and uh, not a good move for, uh, for the Irish rider. Three kilometers until the summit. Adam Yates is out of the running for the win. Same goes for Bauke Mollema. Um, I mean, they're probably going to catch us either way, but you never know. Dumoulin, steady rhythm, 75, just wearing out uh, Carapaz, Bernal and Vincenzo Nivelli as we approach the summit of the Mortirolo. Um, we might just try like a, a, a little acceleration at the top, but I probably won't go too over the top just because my fit, well, my lack of yellow is scary. Right, I've got no yellow left, but we've dropped Carapaz and Egan Bernal. That is quite impressive in a first category climb. Although Dumoulin's dead, uh, we're granted he's completely out. But there's a descent, we're now going to stay in the wheel of Vincenzo Nibali and not do anything for the remainder of the descent. Because uh, that's what we do. Nibali has all the interest in the world to pace. He's got the chance to overtake again Banal in the GC. I, I don't know how he's doing that. I, I don't know how he's physically doing this. But Roman Kroziger has dropped everyone in the rake, well, in sorry, in the group that got dropped, Kroziger dropped everyone, came back on us, which, I mean, isn't isn't hard, considering we didn't pace at all, we were, we were literally, like, stopped in the descent, but he's now attacked me. And so has Vincenzo Nibali, thank God someone has attacked, because I can take his wheel. Uh, oh, Carapaz, Richard Carapaz struggling, uh, although he's probably going to come back either way, no, he's probably going to come back. Uh, Kroziga though, looking a bit dodgy right now on energy. Kroziga, um, can he follow the attack of Tom Dumoulin? We're gonna see Dumoulin, Bernal, Nibali, Carapaz, the four strongest guys of the peloton of the Giro. Dumoulin, Bernal, Nibali, the, the three strongest guys on this peloton. Uh, and then we've got Carapaz and Kroziga, who's gonna make a, a nice like comeback in the GC. But we now have four kilometers until we reach Ponte di Legno. Uh, I'm going to stop pacing, because that's not what I'm here to do. That's probably going to help Carapaz coming back on us, but I don't care. Two kilometers to go, and the first attacks have been on the way. Vincenzo Nibali is the first one to make a move. Bernal is in his wheel. Same for Tom Dumoulin, who's now going to go on the right-hand side of the road. Can Tom Dumoulin overtake Vincenzo Nibali? Yes, he can. Can he overtake Egan Bernal? He did. Can Bernal overtake Dumoulin? No, he cannot. It's going to be a win for Tom Dumoulin in Ponte di Legno ahead of Bernal, Vincenzo Nibali, Richard Carapaz, Roman Kroziger, Mikel Landa and Dan Martin are going to fight for top for sixth position. Bauke Molema, one of the biggest losers of today's stage. Um, same goes for Adam Yates. Where's, like, who was P5 of the, G of the GC? Primo Roglic, he's going to do so much after today's stage. It's another win for Tom Dumoulin. Uh, if I'm correct, that's what, isn't that like four stages? Yeah, that's four win in five stages. Uh, four out of five for this episode for Tom Dumoulin, doing what has to be done. 
uh, ahead of Vigan Bernal and Vincenzo Nibali. Richard Carapaz brings him fourth position with Kroziga in fifth. A very strong state from uh, the Dimension Data leader. Primo Roglic losing just under seven minutes. Seven minutes. Enric Mas, the best young rider, losing ten minutes. That is huge. Huge losses for some of the GC guys. And when you take a look at the new GC, Primo Roglic, who was fifth, is now out of the top ten. Same for Enric Mas. Um, with 208 ahead of Bernal, 327 ahead of Nibali. 647, 1114, 1151, 1226, 1228, 14, and 14 minutes and 29 seconds is the gap between P1 and uh, P10, which is Dionisa Guerre. Tom Dumoulin is on another planet. Now, I'm guessing Bernal is probably going to go on the Tour de France afterwards, which I'm not going to do with Tom Dumoulin. But that is just incredible. From Egan Bernal, uh, sorry, from Tom Dumoulin, just to, to like dominate the field. Um, point wise, well, I'm still gonna increase my, my gap, obviously, I am. Mountain wise, Kreuziger came back uh, on some moment. Tom Dumoulin, though, um, didn't let him, didn't let the, t t oh, sorry, didn't let Sunweb down, uh, and is still 70 points clear of Roman Kreuziger with five stages to go. Um, the best young is probably still Henrik Mas. Yep, still in like mass. Some of them dropped a lot today. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the stage. Wait, at the stage, some of them lost what? 24 minutes? No, wait, no, 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 because that's Bernard, okay. So I lost 14 minutes on um, on Enric Mass today. And on, oh, uh, sorry, on Dumoulin. I'm gonna get there. Uh, and GC wise, uh, oh, yeah, of course, Bernard is the white jersey. I'm so dumb. Uh, best team, still the team Movie Star. Um, well, I mean, they won't get a podium, they won't win the tour, they won't get a, s a distinctive jersey, but uh, at least they'll, uh, they'll have the team classification. However, I hoped, uh, I hope, sorry, that you've enjoyed this uh, this third installment of the Giro on the Team Sunday Career Mode. Uh, if you did, then please be sure to smash the like button, it would really mean a lot, uh, and I would really appreciate it. Also, if you're not yet uh, subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. Um, and hit the bell to get notified of whenever I upload. Um, speaking of, of upload, I don't know when this is gonna get uploaded. Um, probably like after the Vuelta. Like, yeah. I think the Sun, like the, the Monday just after the Vuelta. Which therefore means that will be close to the release of FIFA. So FIFA 19 should, oh, sorry, FIFA 20. Should probably come on the channel in a few days slash weeks. I, I, I don't exactly know the release date of the video or the game right now, so I'm um, it's like hypothesis. Hypothesis, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I've been Black War. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys. Yeah, and uh, no, I I've missed my intro. Anyway, uh, I've been Black War. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys. I'll see you for the fourth installment of the Giro, the 19th episode of the Team Summit Pyramid. See ya. Pull up, pull up in the gold, I'm bleeding. But the mother man need feeding. I don't wanna go bomb Them I don't know what I do when I go from bleeding. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bass. Snapping with a phone and dab. I'll swap them out with the duster. Put him in a drip and sip, blockbuster.